We're so glad I got this on camera! Hi guys, I'm Dr. Hans and this is Talk to Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. What would happen if dry hopping under uh, pressurized fermentation goes really, really wrong? I'm all for pressurized fermentation. It lets me ferment super fast. It lets me ferment like oxygen free, oxygen free transfer. I'm always in an over pressure. But what if that goes wrong? This time it really did. I decided to see if the overpressure of the beer could save this beer. So this beer has been sitting for about three months in the keg. So it should be really, really bad. I realize now that I should have done a grain to glass maybe early of the beer, but let's try it out. If everything goes as planned and one thing goes really bad, would it be saved by the fact that the push off of the carbonated beer will drive off all of the oxygen? Or did I just make a bad, stupid decision and not drinking this IPA as fresh as possible? Of course I did. All for the experiment and the learning and the science of beer. We're gonna start this video with some brew footage and the dry hopping footage and then we come back and pour the beer. I have the beer here in my kegerator. So we're gonna pour the beer and of course also have the recipe. So we're gonna run through the recipe. Speaking of recipes, the recipe is of course already up in the Dr. Hans recipe book on my Patreon page. Patreon is a crowdfunding place where you can support people who are doing stuff that you like. So my patrons get access to all of my recipes and uh, recipes from my videos, recipe beer made recipes and more updates than here. So if that sounds interesting to you, go and check it out. But speaking of patrons, roll the patron list.
16 hours or so of the pitch and we have Krausen, we have great deal of pressure a great amount maybe you should say uh, and we have bubbling showing up in the thermometer so sweet still at 25 so we're still sitting at 25 C it's dry hopping time we have 100 grams of dry hop in here it's a third citra a third simcoe a third columbus sorry yeah so and this is like 28 hours something like that after pitch so we're still at good pressure at good activity here don't be fooled by the Krausen because this is under pressure so we're gonna release this and this is gonna have to be fast so this time we're gonna do a double dry hop so this is at high Krausen and then we're gonna do another dry hop at When the fermentation uh, slows down a bit, and see if we can do this without any accident. You can see the enormous reaction, so we have to be quick about this before we get a boil over or sweat. Okay. Woo! I'm so glad I got this on camera! I'm telling you! Woo! Oops! Okay. What a mess. The doctor made a mess. Okay, but I got most in. And uh, any... Oh, it smells lovely. Okay, I have some cleaning to do. We gonna... Smells amazing! But what a mess. Okay, this is the problem with dry hopping pressurized beer. And I've never had a reaction like this one. But I think I got the most hops in. There's some left here. Uh, a lot of cleaning to do. But we're gonna need to put some pressure on this straight away. because we're still fermenting and we want to uh, hope you can see it what happens when you put pressure on dry hops it just falls down but we're going to do we're going to try let's say try it this time we're going to try uh, another attempt maybe tomorrow something like that to put the second hop addition in this smells so lovely so fruity maybe we get a lot of esters from the USO5 ah <sighs> or maybe we don't we will have to wait and see so there's a leak somewhere we should try to see if we can stop the leak. Yep, that helped. I think there's still a small leak. Can hear some noise. We're gonna Try to put this on the right way. Okay. Okay, I think that's better. I'm gonna see if we can put even more pressure on this. We do have some hops floating there. 
mostly sank down. But the idea is that the next time we do this, I won't pressurize it again. But now I want to, because we're still, oh, wrong. Because we're still at like high Krausen. So put more gas on it even. Aiming for like 35 psi. We didn't lose much beer, but you know, it's a sticky mess. Okay, we are there. Let's hook up the spawning valve again. Okay, a lot of pressure. If you don't pressurize your fermenter as much as I do, you, will, you won't have the, the same problem really. Living on the edge. Next morning, we're still at 25. The demand of pressure. And yes, it looks good. Good activity down here. Hope you can see. Yeah, you can see some movement. You can see some bubbling there in the uh, thermometer. And we have no hops just sitting. So we have Krausen on top and hops spread all around. So it was good to do an early dry hop in the fermenter source. The tilt reads 10.25 now, but that's under pressure. So that could be more like even like 10.30, something like that. So it's too early for my plan for this brew to uh, add the second hop just yet. This is just still not even two days since pitch. So yeah, I have to keep that in mind that we're fast brewing with the pressurized fermentation. Okay, it's time for dry hop number two. This time I'm gonna try something different. Okay, we're losing just a tad of pressure there and uh, we're still at 25C. Just a slow bubble now in the thermometer. So fermentation is definitely slowing. So we're gonna dry hop the second time. This time I was thinking that I would just release some pressure and then let it sit for an hour, something like that, and come back and then try it again. So we don't get a explosive reaction as last time. Let's see what happens. You get a good picture there. Okay, so beer starting to foam up. You see? So glad I didn't open this one up. And let's end it there. Okay, so if I would have opened that, it would have been a disaster. Maybe even we should try to uh, open it a uh, second eye. It's, you see, it's foaming off quite quickly. So maybe we can continue to vent it. As you see, yeah. We could continue venting it. The plan was to let it sit for an hour maybe. But as you see, it seems like we can uh, went this very fast. Okay, so we're getting lower and lower. Okay, it's working. Let's 
major activity here. Don't know how much you can pick up, but it's working. So I'm gonna let this sit for a while and then go and get the, uh, the dry hop and try to get them in there and close the lid back on. And uh, yeah, and then it's time to start bumping up the temperature. I ain't gonna pressurize it uh, today. I want the uh, the hops uh, kind of float for a while and then we will continue to uh, monitor the the pressure but the fermentation isn't over so uh, bumping uh, bumping the temperature up really should make some new pressure I'm gonna close that there and uh, shut off the camera and go and get the hops Pumping the temperature up really should make some new pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna close that there and uh, shut off the camera and go and get the hops. Okay, here's the hops. This is 33.3 grams of citra. 33.3 grams of Simcoe, 33.3 grams of Columbus, so totally 200 grams of dry hop. So we used a total of 300 grams of hops in this IPA. It might get hoppy. Okay, the amazing tool. What the fuck? <clears throat> okay, open. Woo. Yes, that sticky mess really glued it on. There can be some reaction here when the uh, hops go in. No major reaction there. I ain't gonna pressurize it, but as it wasn't as much off gassing as Last time we could like scrub some of the air introduced out. Okay, so I'm Filling up and releasing at the same time. I don't think I got much air in there. Because there's still off gassing going on here. So, But yeah, I have at least filled up some CO2 on it. But it ain't much pressure now. Gonna hook the thermometer and the spun it back. See, it's nearly no pressure at this stage, but it's okay because uh, it will continue ferment and uh, we come back and monitor the fermentation and the the pressure. So all we got to do now is raise the temp. Now it says 24, so it's maybe not perfectly insulated. But set this to something higher, let's say 28. 
Have you ever fermented USO5 at 28? Added the yeast on Sunday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So second dry hop on day three. Okay guys, that was the brewing footage. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's pour the beer. Ticky gloss. Uh, you will find that at my Amazon Influencer store. You will find the most stuff I used for beer and brewing, stuff I use and, and recommend. And also for filming, so like you have a mic here and the, uh, the lights and the field recorder up there and yeah, all the stuff I use. Okay, so no massive head here, it's underbuilding a bit. So we have a half finger head, we have a clear beer with a slight haze. We have a dark store colored beer. Speaking of lights, something like that. Okay, so it's a beautiful looking beer. This IPA is like three months old. So, did it get oxidized? Can't get it on the nose. Nor does it have a, a lot of hop flavor. Which it actually had junk. Why do I do these things? Cheers guys. Let's dive in. No, no uh, problems at all with oxidizing of the beer. It's still hoppy on the palate. It's not as uh, like fresh hops. Their, their aroma is mostly gone by now, but uh, yeah, it's still kind of fresh on, on the taste. I actually... I wouldn't say that I was planned what, what, what I was going to say, but... I thought that I was going to say that this is like buying a store-bought IPA at Systembolaget. Systembolaget is the only store here in Sweden where you can buy beer over 3 0.5% ABV and yeah you guessed it right it's owned by the government but no this is much fresher than that and yeah this has been sitting cold what can we learn from this that uh, fermenting under pressure is uh, is king it's awesome because um, your beer is always carbonated so even when we have an accident like I had this massive escape of CO2, nothing will get in there. Okay, this is plastic, it's a breathable material, but it's an overpressure in there, and with an overpressure, nothing gets in. Zero contact with oxygen and easily transferred over to the keg. Fill up your keg with stars and water. Yeah, you can re reuse that. Push all of the stars and solution out with CO2, then you have only CO2 in there. And transfer it over you have absolute zero contact with air even if you fuck up one step never leave your ipas for months because it really this is a really good ipa still but it's not as good as it were young still better than store-bought though i would really love to go to america and try out some of the beers we can buy here over there caked fresh. When I went to London I tried the Camden Pale Ale which sucks here. It was a really nice beer over there on tap. Let's have a look at the recipe. The recipe is here straight from the Patreon page in my iPad so let's check it out. And I'm going to give you the uh, recipe in kilos, but of course I'm also going to give you the recipes in percentage. Because percentage is always the best way to share a recipe. Then the brewer just can add his efficiency numbers and calculate his amounts. And I have an efficiency of 7-8% on my system if i'm doing like a normal barley beer if i'm doing something sticky like a wheat beer something like that it's more like 72 percent really 
So in this beer, and this was for 23 liters, I used four kilos of pale ale, Mary's Otter malt, 75.5%. I used 500 grams of Munich malt, that's about 10%. 500 grams of wheat malt, that's about 10%. And I did use some caramel molds in this one, and I'm I'm the one who says that don't use caramels in IPA, but you can if you don't overdo it really. I used 300 grams of light crystal, yeah. But so the color here comes from light crystal, and of course the Munich mold. This was a no shield beer. So at flame out, I added 33.3 grams of Citra, and the same of. Uh, Columbus and the same of Simcoe. This was fermented with Safel USO5. Two packs of rehydrated Safel USO5. I did ferment this under pressure over two bars and started at 25C, ended at 30C. Fermentation was over in about four days, something like that. 1056 fermented out to 1011. That gives us a percentage of 6% ABV. I used three bags of hops, so I divided them by three. 100 grams of each. In Whirlpool added 33.33 .33 of each. Citra, Columbus and uh, Simcoe. And it was a double dry hop, so I added a third of each in the first time and same in the second time. I have a whole playlist on the fermentosaurus, so if you in interested in pressurized fermentation. If you're interested in pressurized dry hop and you don't have fermentation, you just want to try it in the cake, go and check out my coconut napa video. There I showed you a way to do that. And um, it wasn't very an in-depth video, so I need to like do follow-ups on that also. Because uh, if you are if you're caking already like the fermented source, is, it, it ain't the only choice for, for you to start fermenting under pressure and uh, yeah, dry hopping under pressure. If you have any experience with dry hopping under pressure and fermenting under pressure, please comment down below. Let's get the discussion started. So if you are new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber and yeah, hit that little bell. And if you already are a subscriber, please check that you have checked that bell. Because YouTube is doing some funny stuff. Subscribe doesn't really mean that you are a subscriber. You also have to say to YouTube that you want to know if I put content out. So by subscribing and hit that bell, YouTube will show you my videos, hopefully, if they don't come up with another trick. Of course, you don't have to watch all of my videos that I'm posting up. If you check that bell and you say all notifications, you at least can make a decision and I can have a chance to continue doing experimental brewing. If you found this video interesting, please give it a like. If you found it a waste of time, be sure to double smash that thumbs down button. So, cheers guys and thanks for watching. Dr. Ansal.